We are entering in our next track, mobile personalization strategies and omnichannel here at Webit's Marketing Innovation Summit. Cubic Attribution is supporting a new view of digital data to enable brands understand how consumers truly interact with their marketing activity, both on and offline. Welcome to the stage of Webit Festival, Mr. Russell McCarthy. Good afternoon, guys. Um, I'm wearing this and that entrance. I feel a little bit like Britney Spears in the 90s, um, but I won't sing. I'm really sorry. Um, so my name's Russell McCarthy. I'm CEO of Cubed Attribution, and we are a marketing attribution company. And most of you are going, I haven't got a clue what marketing attribution means. Um, so I'm just going to ask a few questions. It's that point where you have to put your hands up again. Um, who here knows what digital analytics is? Yes, and the people who aren't putting their hands up are just doing it because they're just too lazy. Um, who here has done attribution before? And this is the issue I have, is that a lot of people understand analytics, um, but they don't actually do attribution. And analytics and attribution come hand in hand. What I've been doing over the last sort of five, six years is working with brands on better understanding the way that consumers actually engage with them. And part of that came out of a attributed view. Now, I um, have spoken in a number of different countries, and I had the pleasure of wor working with a, a team in San Francisco a few weeks ago. Um, and I decided to do a presentation which would explain baseball to the Americans. Um, now, <laughs> it might have been a mistake. Um, but uh, there's a, a fantastic film called Moneyball with uh, Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill, um, and it's an incredible film. Um, it's probably Brad Pitt's best film, and in it, he plays a character called Billy Bean, who is a, a baseball general manager, and it's a true story based on a team called the Oakland Athletics, and they were a very, very terrible baseball team. Um, and he came in and he brought in Jonah Hill, um, obviously not Jonah Hill, um, but the character played by Jonah Hill, um, to basically use uh, mathematics to help his team perform better. Now, uh, I'm trying to, I'll go over the principles of baseball really quickly. There are four uh, bases that someone has to get around. Um, and back in those days, the players who were, who were paid the most money could hit a home run very often. Um, and I say very often, but it wasn't actually that often, but they were paid a lot of money to hit a home run. Um, and Billy Bean and the Oakland A's actually changed the way that baseball and the mechanics that sit behind it uh, came into about because they started to look at the value of putting someone between the, the home plate and the first base and then actually working their way through all of the different bases in baseball rather than just focusing on trying to hit that goal straight away. Now, you might actually have clued up to what I'm actually talking about here, because a lot of marketers um, and analysts who look after marketing teams, they focus on that conversion, and it's driving that final conversion, and what you end up with is over-optimizing to that final point. Now, attribution starts to help you understand a better position as a brand, because you can start to say all of that activity that leads up to that conversion point actually has value. So we had some stats earlier from, um, from Google about that um, the conversions, uh, most 96 to 98% of people who come to uh, a website for a brand don't actually convert. Now that's completely true because most brands here, if you had a 3% conversion rate, you'd be uh, overjoyed because you were probably on a 1% conversion rate at the moment. Um, but what, we're, what we live in is this world where 98% of people don't actually do what the brand wants them to do, which is purchase. Now, what we help brands understand is actually that 98% of people, you have to look after them in a way that you hit goals that they have. So the principle behind a micro conversion, which is an action that has revenue value, but not direct revenue value, is something that brands need to better understand. Um, 
I've only got five slides um, because I try to keep it really simple because I can talk about algorithms and I can talk about propensity and causality modeling, but most of you would fall asleep. So I'm trying to keep it very short and sweet. Um, so this is a lovely icon that I've just blown up um, that basically shows you the different interaction points within a consumer's journey. So that one at the top is the one that people t tend to focus on. That's the conversion point where a sale has been made. Now, as a brand, you want to better understand everything that's happened before that. Because the activity that happens in display tends to not drive a conversion. The, the activity that happens within SEO tends to not directly drive a conversion. So all of the content that's being produced and the creative that's being produced and that ad spend doesn't actually directly contribute to a conversion. So historically, we've lived in a world where you look through view few advertising, so you start to understand anyone who's seen that advert, we're going to apportion the value of that sale to them. What we can do nowadays is build out an algorithm that effectively shows that value and helps brands to understand the true value of every interaction. Um, it's key to point out, and this is something I'm passionate about, which is why um, I joined Cube Data uh, a while ago now, um, was that we're not just taking over from old school mechanics. We're not building a media mix model. We're not trying to just redistribute budget to make things more efficient. We're not supporting an econometrics model. What we're doing and what the market should be doing is trying to better under understand consumers. And if we live in a world where we focus everything about understanding consumers, not customers, we start to address that 98% rather than focusing on the sales and that activity that only drives conversions. And what we see is the brands that start to look like this actually appeal to a much wider audience because they're able to tailor what they're doing in a perceived personalization manner and much better. Now, one of the sort of fallacies that sits behind attribution is um, you need to pick a model. Um, now, in a, uh, a product that's provided by a, a, a very large business, this is the, the descriptions of the models that they provide. So the top one there is, is last click. Um, in an AdWords scenario, they say uh, last non-direct click. So someone who has interacted with you multiple times. So each one of these bars is someone visiting your website. So the first, um, the first bar, they, they came from your website uh, through a display banner click. Um, the second one was an SEO visit. The third one was an email visit. And then the fourth one was a, a PPC click. Um, in a last click model, all of the value of that sale, say 100 pounds, has been put onto that PPC click. Now, this is how Google Analytics, uh, Adobe Omniture, or Omniture, uh, uh, Adobe Analytics, most companies run their models off of this. And this is because they haven't considered the value of all the historical activity. Now, we then switch that, switch that around. So the first click or the first interaction is where you put all your value. Because from a consumer point of view, you're saying, OK, this is the first time that someone has seen our brand or interacted with our brand. So we need to understand that point. Um, this is, again, it's, it's kind of bullshit as well. Because what we have is this position where brands focus so much effort on, say, display advertising that they then Un, not, they don't understand the value of the, the activity that happens between that and the final touch point. So most display advertisers, this is the, the post-impression value view. Um, they'll, they'll look at the second model here and say, this is the one that represents the value that display brings. Um, the third one is called distributed, or um, the parents who have kids model, where you kind of just give the sweets to everyone and go, well, if we give them equal amounts, that must be fair. Um, this one, again, is, is bullshit as well, because what we end up here is that a channel that really didn't have any value because they came to the website and they bounced actually gets given exactly the same amount of value as everything else. We then have bathtub, uh, bathtub and then last click, last non-direct click with a waiting on time. All of these type of models, we are you have to pick yourself. So as a marketer, you go into the platforms and you select one of these models. As soon as you make that selection, you're saying, I know how all my customers engage with my brand, which you can't do. 
Um, there's no way that you can possibly do that. So the only model that actually is correct is something that is algorithmically calculated based on the true value of what that's going on. Now, that's where the t talk on propensity and causality, I can do that at the after party, uh, after a few drinks. But for now, the, the, the understanding is everything that goes on within a consumer journey, so that display impression, the 50 display impressions, that PPC click, what we need to do is understand every event that happens during that interaction and then work that back through and then redistribute the value of a sale across all those interactions. Now, the real reason why this is actually really difficult is that we live in this world at the moment where so many people spend so much money on technology and they don't invest in the people to look at it. Um, and I, I, I was, prior to being CEO, I was a, a consultant for enterprise companies. And the amount of times I went in and I can make you a hundred thousand pound saving um, by removing half the technology that you've not logged in to for the last six months, um, because the, they didn't employ people to look at the data sets that they were capturing. It's all well and good having big data and all these enterprise tools, but you need to have the people that look at this. So the the eighty twenty rules are a standard rule set. We need to put 80% of people behind the 20% of technology that we're doing. And when we do put 80% of people behind it, we need two different types of people. We need the people who are the thinkers, the ones that live in the cloud, the ones who think of the ideas that are going to critique that system and come up with new ways of using that data set. And we need the people, and dirt is sent, it tends to be a, a negative term, but these are the people who get their fingers in the data set, get their nails dirty to actually make sure that the data that's being used is right and it, make sure we get data integrity. The biggest issue that brands and businesses like mine face is psychological, not technical. Now, a lot of people say it's a barrier, is uh, onboarding, etc. The biggest issue is changing a mindset in a business because ultimately someone in that business is responsible for the amount of money that business makes. And attribution doesn't directly take £100,000 worth of revenue here and it doesn't make that £100,000 any more over here. What it does is it helps you understand how consumers are working with you as a brand and lets you make better decisions. So this is actually a psychological thing that you need to, to factor in. Because in the past, we were looking at counter visits. Currently, most brands are looking at visitors, and they're thinking of people. Um, we need to be looking at customer lifetime value. And lifetime value is a very difficult metric to make, because the moment that you start work with a multi-channel or an attribution provider, all of your historical data doesn't have that mindset in it. And you have to change that whole process within a, within a company. And that has to go all the way up to CMO, board, and quite often CFO level, who ultimately is responsible for how the budgets get distributed in that business. Um, I've literally got six seconds left. But um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'm going to be around all day if anyone's got any further questions. Thank you. <laughs>